Hey, visionaries. Welcome back to the Your Biggest Vision Show. Today's guest is Kristen Moses. She is the founder of Design Good, and she is a veteran in the branding and design space. So we are going to learn a lot from her about her journey and about branding, and we're really excited to have you here. So thanks, Kristen. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very excited too. I love what you're doing. Ah, thanks so much. Well, I would love to kind of start before you were a veteran <laughs> in this field. So how did you get into this and, and what made you fall in love with design? Yeah, it was kind of, um, it definitely was something if I look back at my childhood that I was always doing, I was always playing and like, I did not care about Barbies. I did not care about anything girly. I wanted Play-Doh, I wanted Legos, I wanted Tinker Toys, I wanted anything that I could make something with. So I've always been naturally good at putting things together. Um, and even as a child, I would always like memorize jingles from like commercials and memorize billboards. And my mother thought it was the weirdest thing, but she always laughed at it. But I was just very honed in, I think, on brands, even as a child um, and the messaging and, and paying attention to what caught people's eyes and what worked and what didn't work and what resonated. I don't know. It was just something weird about me that I, I loved even as a kid and then um, as an adult you know I just I always felt like I was a creative person I didn't really have an outlet for it um, what I ended up going to school for was graphic design which I had no idea what that was when I was in high school like I'm I'm 41 so like at the time it really wasn't a thing this whole digital world yeah. was a thing. there was no Instagram there wasn't embarrassing I mean enough to say I mean there really wasn't I've lived in a time when there really wasn't websites and it's now that there are. So uh, I've definitely seen it both ways and had to adjust, but yeah, there wasn't like the true outlet that there is now, which is we're living in such a cool time and it's only going to keep advancing and getting better. So yeah, when I decided to go to art school for graphic design, I really didn't understand what it was, but when I got there, I was like, Oh my God, this is my jam. You know, this is what I've been doing my whole life and I just feel like it had to be some divine intervention that I ended up there um, doing what I was doing um, because it was very natural to me um, once I got there and then really after school I worked for a couple other design agencies and I think what prompted me to start my own company was that I just was sitting you know watching other business owners and other entrepreneurs run these companies and I was kind of like hmm I wouldn't have done that or hmm that that didn't seem right and I think that it was just um, when I ended up starting my own company it was me observing things that maybe I thought weren't weren't what I would have done in those situations and that I always kind of knew in the back of my head there was a there was a better way or there's a more connected way or a more intentional way to work with clients because I truly was in these um, design shops and they were just like cranking out design work and at this time there was websites by this point um, but very much just focused on like a band-aid type approach like a client needs a mm. brochure, a client needs a website a client um, is going to an event let's make it look pretty it was very much about making things look pretty um, and I, I think in the back of my head was always like, where's the intention? Where's the connection? Where's the like deeper meaning here? Because, um, again, things have evolved, but definitely that's absolutely what people care about now. Um, cause they're so inundated with visuals. And I think, you know, it depends on who you hire to create your brand or who you work with. There is plenty of talent out there for beauty, but there's not always, um, the meaning behind the beauty. And I think that is what kind of sparked where I am now being very important to me. Um, so this was 15 years ago when I started my company. Um, and at that time I did start with a business partner. It was my best friend from high school. She was a, a marketing and fashion major. She went to FIT. So she was kind of bringing that like marketing and the language side to it because I truly even though I understand the language, I am not a writer. I can, I know what it means to say, but I will, I have a hard time kind of like making it perfect. So she definitely brought that to the table. So at the time, you know, I was younger. I was probably 26 when I started the business. That was a great situation for me to have a partner um, to help build this because we could very evenly split 
the kind of tasks and duties she did sales. I did, I ran the company. I ran all the design side. Um, I would get handed off the clients after they became clients and really work with them on creating their brand. So that was super fun for me. And we did that for nine years. We had the company in Houston, which um, I don't know how much you know about Houston, but it's a lot of oil and gas, a lot of real estate, a lot of healthcare. And even though I was very blessed to do that work and we had ton of, tons of work um, because at the time the industries there were booming, um, it definitely felt a little, um, I don't want to use heartless because it's, that's, seems so dramatic, but it wasn't what I'm doing now. And I definitely yearned to get to a place to now where we are design good. Um, so I had that company with her for nine years. It was very successful. Um, you know, I felt like I was like, this is it. This is what I work so hard for. I have this agency and this like glitzy office and um, a conference room and a reception area. And I think I woke up one day and I was like, Ugh, I hate this place. Like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I was trying to do. I created this thing and I didn't want to go there anymore. I didn't want to be there. And it was, it was such a, like, it was almost a rock bottom for me. It, this was mm. nine years into having that company. Um, and I think it very much was like the lack of meaning the roboticness that it came into the types of projects that we were working on i'm not saying anything bad about my clients they were lovely people but it was just the type of work we were doing i was like we we create beautiful brands but i was like anybody can do this like you know what's the difference between us and the other beautiful design agencies that are also you know in houston at the time um and at the same time me and my business partner were kind of having some some differences of opinion. She was, you know, like getting married and having babies and her, her priorities shifted, which is completely fine. But I was in this place where I was like, I still want to work. I want to build mm -hmm. something. I thought we were building this thing together and we built this thing and I don't even want it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so it very much was like a life crisis. I felt like, um, that ending of that company, which we ended up deciding to part ways was very much like getting a divorce. It was, totally. super, it was super painful for me. I was the closest thing that I'll ever go through that felt like dying. <laughs> wow. um, just because it was very much a separation. Like I, we had to go to all our clients and say, we're not doing this anymore. And they were like, right. why? And all I could say was just like, I'm not happy. Like it felt very weird. Um, giving up something that was super successful just because of values and and like that nudging inside your body um, but we did it it was painful it was hard um, I did maintain some of the clients but at that time I had always wanted to kind of move back to Austin and um, Austin is my happy place I love it here um, so I took that opportunity of I literally like closed down my company, started a new company, sold my house, bought a new house, like started a new company all within three months. And I got here and I was like, what did I do? I literally <laughs> let, let everything go in my life within three months. Um, Wait, and, I want to pause you there. There's like a few yeah. things that I want to unpack before we keep going. So yeah. um, what you just said that, uh, <laughs> you know, it was so hard giving away something that was so successful for something like values. But I think, you know, that can be your definition of success as something that's in alignment with your values. Yeah. And it sounds like your kind of journey has led you to always being in alignment with your values. You know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what did you go through when you decided to go to graphic design school and no one even knew what graphic design was? Did you have pushback from people? Was that a hard decision to make? Oh, was yeah. there any drama? Yeah. I mean, at the time it was, my father was very much like, what are you going to do? Draw pictures for a living. I mean, he, yeah. was, he was very confused, but then, you know, friends of mine had always been like, that makes sense for her. I don't know what that is, but she's very creative. <laughs> and, uh, and like I said, at the time, I didn't really know what it was, but I think um, I've always had this kind of guidance inside of me, whether I choose to look at it or not, or how painful it is to, kind of get me to these places like getting me to design school that was like just divine intervention I think and then even the place where like 
being looking like a crazy person of giving up a successful company um, and a successful brand. Like I didn't even want to keep the name. I was at a place where, you know, my business partner was like, you take it, just run with it. And I was just like, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want this thing. Um, I want the experiences I had from it, which ultimately got me to where I am now, which is a totally different place. But, but yeah, I just get these things in my heart that just like, don't let me move forward or they doors start to shut to where it pushes me somewhere else. And it doesn't always feel good, but I've always ended up in the right places. Have you gotten, do you think you've gotten better at listening to it or quicker at listening to it? Uh, yeah, just because I know what it feels like. And, and I, you know, I sometimes feel that way even in my business now. And it's really just a, like a nudge <laughs> to listen to yourself and listen to um, who you truly are and get more in alignment with your purpose. Because I think anytime you're out of that, it does not feel good. And <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so it sounds like you, you know that well, because for almost nine years, you were sort of out of alignment and it probably did not feel good. Do yeah. you have like any daily rituals or practices or mindset habits that you do to keep yourself close to who you are and aligned every day or anything like that? It's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, <laughs> it's a full-time uh, job. It is. It really is. If you want to like, uh, stay in. So, you know, we talk a lot about flow now at design good and not even just like personal flow, but also brand flow. Um, and that is really putting, infusing your brand with your, your purpose and your alignment. But for me, um, things I have to do is like, I have to read books that are inspiring by people I feel inspired by. I have to, you know, podcast are excellent. Um, I'm always taking some type of online course or, or something that is like helping me learn just recently about a year ago I went through like coach training so life coach training or however you want to say it um just because I've always had coaches that's a big part of kind of I think what's kept me in alignment is always having somebody there as an accountability partner so right now I have a coach his name is Joshua Smith he's fantastic he's also a client of ours but I also have been through coach training so I can kind of like help my clients a little bit further and go a little bit deeper with some of the tools that I've learned by becoming a coach um, and also kind of help myself along a little bit quicker when those things start to come up in my mind, totally. or like limiting beliefs or just when I start to get that feeling again, I'm like, where is that thought coming from? Is that really, I mean, it's not, it's not real. It's just, uh, I'm able to kind of look back into the past and see where that belief started and, and kind of just start to decrease deconstruct it so I can move on quicker. But yeah, podcasts, yoga, coaches, books, learning, like constantly being in a state of learning is super important to me. If I could go to workshops and courses all day, I would. I'd like, be happy doing that. It's like, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you moved to Austin, you have no business, you are starting over. <laughs> what do you do? Pretty much. Um, so I had a few clients that I took with me. Um, but at the point I was so fed up, I was so over everything that I was literally like kind of got rid of all of our employees, which was also very hard. We were sure. a team of nine um, and letting people go was super painful. I did keep my office manager or studio manager who's still my studio manager now. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's, she, I always joke that she's really the one running the company, but <laughs> she's fantastic. But so I land here, I'm like, what did I do? Um, I have to do something different. And I think, again, like I said, it was really that I felt like what we, I was doing was kind of soulless. So the first thing I did was rename the company Design Good, which was very much using design for good. <laughs> I like just quite that literal. Um, I think that meaning has really evolved for me over the last six years. So that company was nine years. I've been Design Good for six. I'm going into my seventh year of having this company. But it really was the choice to make an intentional shift of working with a different type of client. Um, I wanted to work with people that were really passionate about what they were doing and they were coming from a place where they were really trying to make somebody's life better or somebody or the world better. And, and that can be done in a lot of different ways. You can still have like a product brand or create dog collars and be doing it from a place of love and beauty and connection and having a reason for doing it. So um, I think it was mainly the naming and 
if you go to our web website, our language is very much geared at connecting with people and attracting clients that think the same they, the same way that we do, um, which is a big part of what we do for our clients is helping them really figure out what they're passionate about, who they want to be working with, what they're actually giving to the people that they are going to be or are going to have as clients or that would hire them. Um, and really using that as a basis for the brand. So a lot of intention and passion and connection goes into the brands that we create, but also it's a very core component of my brand. And, and just being, um, starting this new company for me was very much about stepping into myself um, and really getting clear about what was important to me and what I wanted to be doing. And it was very different um, than having a business partner. And I'm not saying business partners are a bad idea, um, but you know, this was our twenties that we were going to through together. And that's a time when you're finding out a lot about yourself and you're changing. And especially when you hit your thirties, you're kind of like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Why did I do all that? I'm glad I did it, but I'm, I'm kind of ready to do something else. And I think now as a, 41 year old having this agency that's been with me through my 20s my 30s and now is going into my 40s I can kind of look back and see the evolution of what was important to me um, and the evolution of who I was and it was very important to me when I started this new iteration of my agency um, that it was really rooted in things like spirituality and personal development and and just like even self-care is something I talk a lot about our clients, because if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you take care of other people? Um, you'll be super wiped out and you won't have a lot to give. So um, I think creating brands and businesses, co-creating brands and businesses with our clients that keep them passionate about their work. Um, and part of that is them being able to do this work that they want to be doing. Um, which is where I feel like design good is now truly is we're able to do the work that we really want to be doing with the people that we want to work with. And that's such a, such a gift. Um, but it's work too. It's, sure. It's so when you first started it, when you were from in Austin and you said, you know, that this business was about you stepping into yourself and stepping into who you truly are, what challenges came up with that? Because I think that that's, especially a big shift if you were working in something that was very out of alignment. Um, and it can sound very appealing, but that's pretty vulnerable um, and a big shift. So what was it like in the beginning and what were some unexpected challenges that came up? Yeah, it was, to well, it was absolutely scary because I was, I had been in this world of like working with these corporate people for so long. Right. Who I love, they're great people, but it was very much you had to watch what you said and how you dressed. And I had like a totally different wardrobe than I have now. <laughs> like, I had like suits and, you know, I had to dress a certain way and talk a certain way, um, which I just expected to do at the time. That's just how it was. Uh, so I think making that shift of not talking um, in that manner, I think, you know, if you go to our website, it very much oozes us and who we are. And I think in the beginning, and it's, it's been like kind of inching its way towards what it is now, but can I say certain words? Can I talk about passion? Can I talk about connection? Can I talk about an intention? I mean, we very much use words that are like flow within a brand, which is not anything I would have never ever mentioned years ago and how to make a brand magnetic and how it attracts people and can also do the opposite of that. And I think even talking about attraction and energy within a brand, um, you know, a core belief of mine is that everything has energy and there's different levels of energy. And depending on kind of where you're vibrating at, that'll always be in alignment with the people and the situations and opportunities that you attract to yourself or to your business and really taking that thought process and applying it to branding is kind of wacky, you know, for. <laughs> yeah. So how do you do that? I've, I've heard till I'm blue in the face about your personal vibration and understanding that. How do you do it from a website? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Or> from... <laughs> so I think, you know, when you go to websites and you feel um, like a connection to them, there's, there's websites that you go to and you're like, I feel nothing, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just like, they kind of, which is fine. I understand people are at different places in their business. And sometimes it is important to just, you know, get on Squarespace and put something together that works for you. Um, right. But 
that doesn't probably do the business or the organization the service it would have if you would have taken the time to create something that connected with your audience a little bit deeper. Um, and visuals, you know, like the aesthetics of something, the polish about something is a big piece of doing that. I think client and prospective clients really um, can kind of, they can tell when you've taken the time to maybe work with somebody or to create something that's really beautiful because beauty is high vibration too, right? Um, so there's the aesthetic part, but even more important than that, um, there's that piece of making sure that what you're passionate about really comes through on your website because people can tell. That's like a good bullshit indica indicator is um, are they really speaking from a place of passion and connection? And I feel like clients should be able to come to your website and say, I'm in the right place. They should be able to self-identify themselves. So all the language on a website very much should be directed at the person that you're wanting to work with. And that takes a lot of clarity on who that person is. And that can be, and it needs to be, people that you're excited about working with. Because if you're not excited about working with the people that you're making that effort to talk to on your website, the business isn't going to be around for that long. Or you're going to get burnout. Or you're going to hate it like I did um, right. six years ago where you wanted to light it on fire and walk away. Um, so I think, you know, our process is what we call the hybrid brand method, but it, it yes, very, I love this. Oh, thank you. It's very much, talk, you know, looking at passion, looking at it, intention, looking at expertise, looking at connection, what are you really good at? And a lot of our clients, you know, we ask them to get really deep on what makes them different. And I think some people may say, well, I'm not different. A lot of people are doing the same thing that I'm doing. Well, sometimes that difference is in your delivery and the main difference is what you're passionate about and how you speak to clients and what you get excited about and really looking at that and making sure that that's pulled into your business. And I, I know that's easier said than done um, because a lot of people are probably listening and they're saying, I'm not a writer, I'm not a designer. I still feel like there's a lot of things um, you know, underlining this whole process is clarity. So you getting really clear on what you're best at, what you love doing, who you love working with, and what form does that take? Um, another big piece of having a high vibe business and what I think is so cool now is that everyone is able to create these businesses that are so highly niche. So like I do this one really specific thing that probably couldn't have been a business 10 years ago for this one really specific audience that needs this thing. I think, you know, our business is highly niche because we're saying we work with high vibe entrepreneurs. So it has to be somebody that understands that energy piece and is interested in having a magnetic brand and brand flow and they understand connection and they understand passion or they know that it's important, but they need somebody to help guide them through that. So what's really cool about working with these types of companies is to be able to take them through this process. And I think when all those things are looked at and all those things are applied, that's when there's this really magnetic outcome. Um, and we have a lot of our clients, you know, tell us that it really made the difference of them, like maybe starting a business and puttering around for two or three years or coming out of the gate with something that was very polished and connected and, when clients come to a website or see a brand that, that has been, somebody has taken the time to apply all these things, it makes them feel confident in hiring the person. Um, it just makes them seem capable and clients cannot tell if you've been around six months or six right. years. Um, and that just, it's, it's it a makes a huge builder. difference. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the first things I tell my clients to, especially just for the, for the very beginning, get good photography. <laughs> yeah. If you go to a website and there's, you know, dumb iPhone photography, it's like very quickly a sign that that's not a mature brand at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And on that note of photography, I can talk about that all day, but <laughs> I will just add in very quickly. If you are creating something that is a personal brand, so a brand that is very much based around you, like your brand, yeah, uh, it is important to have photos of yourself and they do not have to be headshots. We do not have to be like standing and looking at the camera. It just needs to show you and your environment and you doing things that you love to do. And maybe you sitting in a park that you really love because 
people want to connect with people and they want to hire people. Um, when I get on the phone with people very often, they're like, I feel like I know you or I, right. and I feel like they know so much about me before I even talk to them. And that's, that's exciting. And that's fun for them. They kind of like see it as a treat when we finally get on the phone together because they have gone to our website and they do get a really good sense of who we are and what we do, or they've heard me talk on a podcast and they just feel connected to me, which I feel is so such a blessing and, and definitely kind of a result of us weaving in all these things that I keep talking about. Right. Brand. Well, and that's, that's how, that's how you want prospective clients to feel. I mean, that's great advice for anyone who's listening to this, who has their own brand, who has a personal brand, you need to build trust with people <laughs> and you can't do that unless you have been authentic and very clear about who you are. So if they are getting on the phone with you and already feel like, you know, they know you, um, then you're doing it right. <laughs> That's exactly what you should be doing. You're building that trust. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say, like, do you have three either really big branding mistakes that you see a lot or three branding, like kind of hacks that you think most people don't know about? What can people actionably do? Um, mistakes or hacks. So I think, um, I, I guess we would call it a hack. I think is I, the clarity piece that I keep talking about. I know that word is thrown around all over the place and people can be like, what does that even mean? Um, but I think until you're really clear on those things about who you're serving, why you're doing it, who you want to be working with, that's foundational to a brand. And I think, I guess this goes into the mistake is that a lot of people will create a website or sales collateral that is very like, it reads like a resume or it reads like right. a Bible. That means nothing to anybody. People are inundated with information now and they don't want to read a bio. They don't want to read like where you've been five years ago. They want to very much hear about what you're going to do for them. So, so very much, you know, what is vastly important is talking about your services and, and your business in a way that creates value for the person that is going to be hiring you because that's what they care about. They care about connecting with you and they care about, can this person do what I need them to do to get me to the next level, especially for your service-based business. This is like super, super important. So I think that is kind of a mistake I see a lot is creating um, websites that talk more about you <laughs> than it talks about the client. Um, that's, that's something that I would say is kind of like 101 for creating a brand. Um, another mistake that we see, um, I guess this goes back to, I, I don't want anyone to say that I'm saying like financially that you cannot, if you don't have the money to work with a, a partner or uh, create a brand that's really beautiful and polished from the beginning, that's fine. But I also feel like the universe and the world is kind of getting tired of um, templated websites and templated um, Squarespace because you can go to one site and it looks just like the other person oh and people Squarespace. are getting one for that. It's like you can go to one site and know right away that it's a Squarespace site. It's a Squarespace template and it serves a purpose. I, I Like I said, I'm not bashing that. Um, if you need a website, you need a website, but you can also take the time to um, do the right at least the writing piece if you can't design or you can't afford to hire a designer at this point there is still that foundational work like I'm talking about of digging deep and at least speaking to the person but I feel like the world has become numb to all the Squarespace websites it just they stop looking at it so when you do finally see a website and they took the time to um, like infuse their brand with themselves and talk to you you're like oh, this is awesome. Like, I want to work with this person. I want to hire this person. I think, you know, when I get on the phone with people, they are already convinced that they want to work with us mm. just because they've been to their website and they're like, I love everything you said. I, I feel the way you feel. I love your work. Like, it, it's very, we put a lot of care into speaking directly to the people we want to work with and that shows. So, that would be my number two is just if you can get somebody to help you, um, your business, and we'll, I, this will go into my number three, your business is worth investing in. I know like um, when you're starting a company, you do have to make decisions on what you're going to pay for. And some people are like, I have to get an office space. I have to do these things. And I, I think a lot of the times brand is, is, 
kind of seen as a luxury. Um, and it's absolutely not. It is something that can make or break your business and also make it successful a lot quicker. So you do see a return on the investment that you make on that because it builds confidence. It shows that your audience that you care, that you took the time to, um, you know, really think about what was important to them. And it, it just makes getting to the place that you want to get so much quicker. I've seen it time and time again. A lot of our clients, you know, they come back a year later and they're like, thank God. I was, you know, really on the fence about spending this much money, but a lot of us have, um, I mean, we have a physical office space where we work, but I would still consider myself an online business because our clients do not come to our office. Our clients are all over the country. I love them all, but most of them I've never seen in person. And really what got me those jobs is having this presence online that they could go to any time of the night. They may have been sitting in their bed in their pajamas at 10 o'clock and they found, you know, a post that we did or a, um, something that we wrote, it got them back to our website. And by the time they filled out our web form, they were already convinced that they wanted to work with me um, or us or our team. So the investment in a brand and something that is polished because it truly is, your platform for running your company. Yeah, you've got to back it up once you get to get on the phone with them, but just getting to the place where somebody feels good enough to call you um, and, and invest with you. I've also seen it, you know, allow our clients to charge more because they look the part. They look, um, they look capable, they look confident. And I feel like power of perception is still something, whether we want that or not, um, brands that look a certain way um, are able to charge more. They're able to do business with the people they want to quicker. They're able to attract more clients. Um, it's just, it is a fact. Um, right. That 100% is a fact and there's no getting around it. So um, I would kind of say those are my, my three. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been super helpful. It sounds like you've had an amazing journey, both as an entrepreneur and a creative, both of which, um, I think a lot of people dream of, but don't ever, or not ever, but it's a, not something everyone has the guts to do. So <laughs> thank you for sharing how both of them have been for you and congratulations on everything you've done. Yeah. Thank you so much. And it, it's definitely an evolution. I mean, like I said, I'm 15 years into it, but every four or five, six years, I have to kind of realign myself and reevaluate. Yeah. And so, yeah, don't think because you started a business now, it's, you'll always add services. You'll always kind of cut things, add things, modify as you go, because you're learning. It's a continual process. A, a, a business is an evolution and it's very much a journey. And so is a brand. Right, right. Well, I appreciate you being so candid with us and I'm um, just sharing that so openly and really giving you know yourself and anyone listening to this permission to continue questioning yourself and, and what you're doing and making sure that it is constantly in alignment because otherwise there's no point <laughs> in working so hard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, I think you have something you can share with our listeners about branding from an authentic and high vibe way. Is that true? Yeah, we do. So um you know, what I'm super proud of is on our website, we have a ton of resources um, for people that are free. Um, our blog is an excellent um, resource. We talk a lot about all the things I talked about today. We have a whole section that's about being a high vibe entrepreneur and what that means. But one of the coolest things I think we have that anybody can work through without having to be a writer or a designer is we have a high vibe entrepreneur workbook on our website that really kind of takes people through getting that clarity um, on who they want to work with and why they're doing it and what they're offering and what the value is. And I think those are core things that you need to know, whether you've had your business for a long time or you're just starting it. Like I said, it, it is kind of a realignment piece. So it's a, it's a great thing to work through. We also have another workbook um, that it just focuses on how to write your website. Um, again, if it's, if you are not hiring somebody or not working with somebody. It's also applying our methods to copy and what needs to go on a website in order to make it really connecting and land. So that's, that's in our tools section of our website too. Um, but there's a few other things in there that I think are super fun and super helpful. But of course, you know, 
getting on our email list, you'll get all this stuff in your inbox. We're pretty good about creating content as well that is beneficial to the people that we want to work with. Great, great. So that's all at designgood.com and we will put that in the show notes as well. Um, well, thank you so, so much for sharing this with us and congratulations again. And I'm excited to see what you keep coming up with. <laughs> you, and congratulations to you too on what you've built. Oh, thank you so much. All right, visionaries. Well, head on over to designgood.com. Um, check out her resources. Check out how you can improve your branding, your website, your copy, any of it today. Um, I have definitely seen firsthand in my own business. And when I worked at Charity Water, which is a nonprofit here in New York, uh, that, and they invested so much money in branding right away, which was considered very unorthodox for a nonprofit, but they have grown to in, in under a decade to, you know, to the fundraising budget that many nonprofits could only dream of. And they totally attribute it to their branding. So many reasons why I can attest to the power of everything you shared today, go on over to design good. And thank you so much again, Kristen. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye. Bye.